Yeah, can everybody see the screen all right? Yeah? Okay, sorry about the pictures. I had a site set up on web enabled and you know after it expires, it disappears. It disappeared on me. So all I got is the develop generate pictures on you for right now. So I spent my 20 minutes like putting together Saturday. Um, so this talk is on View Slideshow, Introduction to View Slideshow. Um, my name is Adam Moore, and uh, I work at the University of California, Merced. And I am the co-maintainer by name to the Slideshow module, View Slideshow module. Um, but pretty much I, I'm working on it right now. The person who wrote it is Aaron Winborn. Um, he got busy with the baby in the media module for Drupal 7. So I've been taking care of it since then, uh, pretty much. Um, today I'm going to go over, uh, I'm sharing it with, and I forgot your name, sorry, we, we met four hours ago, so we're doing the co-presentation and we just met, so, um, but Mike Thorne, right? Yeah. Mike Thorne, and he'll be doing um, some stuff on View Slideshow DD Block. Um, so, View Slideshow uh, is, what it is, it's, you just take text or whatever in views, each row in views, and be able to rotate it. That's all it is. Um, there's different ways you can rotate it. You can rotate it uh, using uh, um, thumbnails. You can or just automatically rotate it. You can have thumbnails on there. Um, you have different types of transitions. Um, a lot of different ways you can do it. Uh, there's other modules that kind of plug into it, and we'll kind of show you those, um, that do different types of transitions. So one is uh, one by Aaron, again, Aaron Winborn, and he does a cover flow type look. And so it gives that Apple cover flow with the image and it kind of slides through. Um, so I'll go over those real quick. Uh, the first thing in this is um, we enable the module. Let me, uh, let me get down there. Two fingers work. So a lot of questions I get is I enable View Slideshow and I see nothing. Well, the reason for that is View Slideshow by itself is not doesn't do anything. All it is is it provides an API for other people to kind of hook into and add different rotators. So people can do like the cover flow stuff. Um, and they can do DD block, which we'll see in a second. Um, so when you enable View Slideshow, you have to enable View Slideshow plus one of the additional modules. So right now, we have a choice of Single frame and thumbnail hover. Those two come with View Slideshow itself. So you can enable View Slideshow, enable one of those also. Um, most people use single frame, it's the simplest to kind of get your head around. Thumbnail hover um, has a little bit more fancy options. Uh, so I enable both of those. So let me go back to there's a menu item, it's right there. I cannot see, so I'm not going to use the hurt. Um, so normally if you have a view, you have something like this, where it's just a list of things, of fields being printed out. Um, and you want to tell yourself, all right, I have this list of stuff, um, it takes up a lot of room, but instead of that I would like it to be able to, you know, rotate through this list of things. Um, so what View Slideshow allows you to do. is it takes that list of stuff, let me kind of scroll down a bit here, and it'll automatically rotate through it. It's that exact same view we just added, I did, all I did was enable the single frame style, and it now will rotate just like this. Um, so it's pretty simple in its design, in what, what it's for. Um, I mean, edit this view. So in your view settings, you have the style, and this is views two, views three looks different than this whenever you guys get to views three. Um, you have the style, and the style is where you're gonna have it. Mostly when you start out with your style, it says style and formatted. Um, so what we'll do is we just go ahead and click on the style, and you choose slideshow, you guys can see down there. You choose slideshow and just click update. And then it'll go to your settings. So in your settings, 
the first thing to look at is what type of slideshow do you want? Before we talk about the single frame, thumbnail, hover, DB block, all of these will be still under that slideshow, first slideshow radio button. But in this drop down list, you'll see each one of them. So it kind of keeps them, I think, better organized than having a big list of styles down there. So right now we're using single frame. And then in this version, in our current version of View Slideshow, there's lots of options to choose from. Um, if you've ever seen it, I could kind of scroll down there, but there's lots of options here and there's even more that you can't really see yet. Um, but going through them, just real quickly, the main ones, uh, the timer delay is um, amount of time it takes for it to switch. So if you want to switch every two seconds, put 2,000. It's in milliseconds. So it's in 2,000 milliseconds is two seconds. Um, initial slide delay offset is how, how long it takes for the first one to go. If you want the first one to last longer, then do five seconds, 5,000 there. And then it'll take 5,000. In this case, let's say this was 5,000. It would take 5,000 plus 5,000, which means 10,000. So it's 10 seconds till the first one rotates. Uh, speed is how fast it transitions. So when it starts to rotate, how fast does it make it to the next one? If you did, you know, 2,000 would be a really slow transition to the, to the next one. Um, you can, you have a choice to start the slideshow paused. So if you don't want it to start rotating in the beginning, you can have it just start pause and then people can press play and get it going. Um, Uh, pause, so I'm skipping a few here, but um, pause lets you, uh, when you hover over the slideshow, it'll pause the, pause the slideshow. Um, pause on click instead of hovering, they have to click on the slideshow before it pauses. Um, so this one's a new feature that we just added a little while ago. So it's kind of a, a funky feature. Um, it's pause when the slideshow is not visible. So one thing somebody asked me for was, okay, my, somebody's going through my page, my slideshow goes out of view, but it's still rotating up there. They can't see it, but you know, they still want them to be able to see every single slide when actually they're actually viewing it. So here, if you choose pause when slideshow is not visible, in this case right now, the entire slide, if the entire slide is not visible, then it will pause. So if even a partial is hidden, then it's going to pause the slideshow. And then when it becomes visible again, it starts it back up. Otherwise, you have lots of options here, like set the amount of vertical, like percentage-wise, well, 50% of the height needs to be shown, or 50% of the width, or how much of the total area can be shown. Um, a lot of options there. And start on last slide view. view. What this does is, um, if somebody goes from the page that has your slideshow, and then goes to a different page, when they come back, they'll come back to the last slide they were on. Um, so then it'll continue from there. So if you have like 20 slides, you still want to be able to see something fresh. You can say last slide view, and they go another page, they come back, and they start back where they were. So in you have controls that you can choose. So um, I'll go show you some of those. But the controls are like next, previous, play, pause, all those type of things are, are controls that are available. Also, you have uh, a pager. So you have a choice of pagers here. So you can have a numbered pager, which is like one, two, three, four, five. And then like you have five slides, and it'll show one, two, three, four, five. Um, you can have thumbnails. And there'll be little thumbnails of it. Now, thumbnails is kind of a tricky one. It was just kind of thrown in here because people wanted thumbnails. But what it does is it grabs the image from your slideshow and makes a thumbnail out of it. Um, it doesn't use image cache. It resizes the image, so it may look funky, so you have to use CSS to kind of fix it, but it's kind of a, a quick feature for someone, I guess. Um, image counter uh, says like one of five, two of five, whichever slide you're on. Um, and then way down here is probably the one that you wanted to get to to begin with, so I'll discuss what's happening in three because these options have gotten kind of out of control. Um, but here you have a choice of lots of different types of transitions. You can fade, you can, uh, um, let's see, 
scroll up, so that means it will scroll the things up, or scroll down. Uh, I'll do scroll left to kind of give you an idea of, of what that is. Um, sync, you usually live at sync. That's if you want to one the transistors now, when the next one transitions in. And so I'm going to go ahead and yeah, yeah. Oops, sorry. Update default display. Save that. Okay, so now we have. Now we have crazy stuff that just happened. Oh, you know what? I'm sorry. I left that checkbox checked to make sure it was shown, right? But I put zero in that. Let me fix that real quick. Um, so you can see the controls up top. Um, you can see uh, the thumbnails are down here because the image is so large. You see the slide left that we have now a different transition for it. Um, the thumbnails are just thumbnails of whatever image is up there. Um, so just really simple ways of kind of just creating slideshows, getting thumbnails. This is probably the quickest way to, to create a slideshow. Most people use single frame. Do we have any questions so far? I know I'm kind of going quick. Yes, sir? That, um, one option that you could uh, have it pick up where the last slide left off. Uh -huh. If you have the slideshow on, say, every page or something like that, will it pick up, like, does it set a cookie or something where? It sets a cookie, <coughs> but I'm not positive. It goes after, after the slide name, okay. so it may, it may pick it up. It depends on what it's named on each page. So I don't remember if it adds like, let's say you had three slides on the page. Views may say slide one, slide two, slide three. And on the other page, let's say the one that you want is here, but it's first on this page, it may be slide one. So it may not be the same name. But I, I can't remember off the top of my head. A good question. Anybody else? All right. Um, so I'll go into thumbnail hover. So all, th Ooh, hello. all thumbnail hovers are, is kind of the same thing. It's rotate the center um, and then have thumbnails. Now I have thumbnails, it originally was made for thumbnails, but now it's like any field. Have any field down below as a pager. So, um, oh, it's, not good. But it's not set to pause on hover, but here, oh there we go. I can rotate through these by hovering over the certain ones, right? Um, but that could be anything that though. That could be a thumbnail you've created with another field or what have you. So let me, I'll show you what I mean by that. So thumbnail hover, you do it the same way. Just choose thumbnail hover. But the options it gives you is um, the main frame fields. That's the main area. What do you want them to be? Uh, in this case, I chose the image. And the breakout fields, what do you want the, the thumbs to be, the breakout parts down there, the pager. Um, so you just choose those fields that you want. It doesn't matter if it's hidden or not. So what I mean by hidden, like, um, you know, when you add fields, you can say that they're, what's the right term? Uh, excluded from display. So it doesn't matter if they're excluded, you can kind of choose them, um, uh, yeah. You can choose them. And so what this allows you to do is a lot finer grain control for your thumbnails. If you want to use image cache for those thumbnails and you want it to be a completely different thumbnail, you can add another field of an image cache version of whatever that image is and then just choose it over here in the slideshow. And so you choose it as one of your fields there. And then you would have your image cache version of your, your pager. For example, I'll give you another example. 
I have another field that I added. This random text field. here on my slideshow, I want my breakout field to be the random text. I imagine that could be an image cache field, that could be whatever field you think of. So now I have a, now it's that random text one. So this is, gives you finer grain controls over what your, mainly what your pagers are. Um, so you can say, my pager can be uh, an image plus some text underneath it that I want to have on there. Um, and then that's how that works. So beyond this, and I wish I could show you more of my other one that I had before it died on me. I had all the other ones enabled too, I can show you. But beyond this, there's a few other ones. There's DD Block, which you'll see in a second. There's View Slideshow Menu. Uh, that's another one I created for somebody. And what that does is allows you to set a slideshow uh, using menu items as your pagers. So let's say you had five menu items up here. You can associate, uh, well, can't really associate, but you can say, uh, if somebody hovers over this menu item, then one of the slides will show up. Or as it rotates, it sets active to that menu item. So you can say, can you make it brighter or whatever have you, as it's rotating through there. Do the menu items have no. Nope. Uh, so the way it works is you have to order your slideshow in the order that you want that the menu items are. So you got to do your work yourself kind of that way. There's uh, views, what's the views sorting one? I can't remember the module, but there's a uh, views module that lets you sort your view. And so you just kind of drag it up and down to the one you want, and I'll, I'll take care of it. Uh, to get it in the order that you want. So it's kind of specific. Um, it's going to bother me, sorry. Draggable views. There we go. So draggable views lets you take a view and drag it and make it in what, or whatever order you want to, in any random order you want to. Um, and another one is... Uh, sorry, I just blinked on it. Uh, image flow, and that lets you do like an Apple cover flow type design where it'll rotate and it'll make, um, I don't know, if you guys seen Apple cover flow, then it's that type of design. Um, you said ga Slideshow Gallery is a new one that Aaron Winborn, I don't know how you found time, but created a new one, View Slideshow Galleria. If you guys ever use the Galleria module, it's the same design and look of Galleria, uh, but it's using a views to, to handle that. And then, if you slideshow, I've said DD block, it's dynamic display block. Um, for that one, uh, you'll get to see in just a second. So you want to go ahead, Mike, and then I'll come back on what's going to happen in view slideshow three. Okay, so hi, I'm uh, Michael Thorne, in case anybody missed that. Um, so what I wanted to cover was partly about um, DD Block, um, which is the plug-in to View Slideshow. It it used to be um, a standalone module called Dynamic Display Block, um, but the author of that decided that he would write it as a plug-in to View Slideshow so that he could take advantage of all the functionality that you just saw um, and make it a lot easier for you to create them. Um, <clears throat> but the other thing I wanted to talk about is really um, an approach to how you can set these up in a way that makes it easier for the administrators of the website to create the slides and to create um, the slide shows um, and be able to go in and edit them. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cover that. Let me just pull up my notes here. I posted... Um, the notes for this session on the site.
So if you go to if you go to the session, um, this is my second session, um, and you scroll down, you'll see a bunch of notes here um, about modules that I used and, and different tips for how to configure it and theme it and stuff. So you can uh, just look at these to follow along a bit. Um, I'll start out first by just showing you some examples of websites that are using the ddblock module. Um, And this will just give you an idea of some of the things that you can do. <clears throat> um, it, it's definitely um, possible to do a lot of these things now that View Slideshow has um, increased uh, the ability of the thumbnail hover feature that he was talking about. You can do a lot of these things um, if you go through the customization process. Um, DD Block Module is really built to, to do these um, a little, a little more. Um, so you can have these these features where this is the slide, and these are the the pages, and you can toggle between them. Um, the way it's set up is that you map fields to uh, fields that are stored in templates. So things like this title and this link, um, the image, and um, and then these. These things that are also found in the page are, are, are fields, and you map them into um, variables. Uh, I'll, I'll show you the interface for doing that. But um, so here's here's some other uh, slideshows that you can create. You can see you can do overlays where the there's text overlays on top of images and stuff. Um, this guy obviously did some uh, some custom coding on on this one to to embed this into the theme as well, um, which was a custom feature for this website. Um, the feature that you see here with the text, or, or with this block of text sort of scrolling down is actually something built into the uh, views, uh, and into the DD block configuration, so it's actually really easy to do that kind of thing. Um, these are a couple of themes that were built by ThemeShark that I thought they had done a nice job on creating these um, DD block modules uh, uh, displays. So as you can see, they, they look nice, got a, got a good style there. Um, so let me dive back in here. And, uh, <clears throat> so some of the stuff that I wanted to be able to do when I'm creating slideshows um, one of the most critical features is this second one here, is that um, when you are presenting a slide, I didn't want it to be limited to just linking to a node. I want it to be able to link to um, any page on the site, whether that's a view or a panel, or even link to an external site. So if someone wants to promote someone else, some, some of their affiliate site or a video or something, um, make it easy to do that. Um, there, if you if you only want to promote nodes, then there are other methods that are that are better for doing that than what I'm showing you right now. <coughs> um, I also wanted to be able to reuse a slide in in multiple slideshows. So if someone um, has a, a slideshow at, at the top of the page for each section of their website, I want them to be able to reuse. A slide within the one that's on the home page and the one that's within their um, their products section, say. Um, and I also uh, wanted to be able to have different styles for slideshows and make it easy for the administrator to switch between those styles. So obviously, we're using View Slideshow, um, the View Slideshow Dynamic Display Block module. Um, and it's built on top of these modules, views, CCK, file field, image field, image API, image cache, link, um, and you have to have jQuery update. Um, some of the extra modules that I've used um, in association with setting these up are, are, are listed here. And um, I think I'll come back and explain exactly how and why I, I use these. 
Um, but you can read the description if I don't get to it. Um, okay, so basically I have two custom content types. And I will show you those now. Um, this page is just a uh, administrative page that I've created to be able to show me all the slides that have been created so I can see all the variables in that are associated with the slide. I can I can get a preview of, of what the images images on the slide look like. I can, I can go through them and stuff. Um, this is this is just an administrative feature that lets it that makes it easier for me if I'm uh, setting slides on a on a slideshow. I can look through here and try to figure out okay which slides do I want to pull out. Um, So here I have the slide content type. If you go to manage fields, you will see the fields that are listed in the notes there. Um, so you, you've got these fields and, and what I'm doing here is I'm creating a content type to store the slide and then that slide I, I specify um, a, the, the the node title is I'm using as the tab link text, and that means that in one of these slideshows, here I'll pull that. Okay, so this is this is a pager on the side. Um, each each one of these things is a separate field. So what I have here on this page is just a list of different slideshows with different settings um, applied to them. Um, <coughs> so uh, uh, where's the fields? Okay. So the fields that you see on here, like the slide background image, that gets mapped into here. I'll show you where the mapping is done. I can edit this view. And that takes me to, um, over here I have a bunch of different displays. And each display corresponds to a different style of slideshow. Do you guys understand what, who, who knows about what views displays are and understands this? So, okay, and who, who doesn't know what these uh, views displays on the side are about? Okay, so when, when you're creating, um, when, you, when you create views, you can attach, a, you can do a bunch of different displays. Um, by default, it comes with uh, blocks, attachments, um, feeds and pages. Um, you get other things like date browser and embed by installing extra modules um, and so for, for for any view you you set up your view here um, in your defaults you provided all the all the fields you provided the filters sorting criteria and all that um, and then if you want to present that information in different ways on different pages or in different blocks you can you can create unique displays and then use them in the site where you feel appropriate so basically what what these are is just slight variations on what the default are um, and what I chose to do um, I used the views and, or embed views uh, module up here because I don't really want to create blocks because then when you go to your blocks administration you're going to have all these blocks that you really don't need um, filling that up and and it also uh, it has some performance impacts and, and the embed views module takes away all that extra stuff that you don't need. 
Um, so if I go in here and, and modify these slideshow properties, you'll see that under the uh, slideshow mode, I still have the other two modes that you were already seeing. I also have the uh, the menu module installed. I have not played around with it much. The uh, the DD block module is the one that's selected. And here's some things that are unique to the DD block. This is where you have these field mappings. So for all the fields that you've specified up here in your view, you can map them to these targets and the targets um, get turned into variables that you can use in, in your template files. Um, let me pull up a template file so you can see what I'm talking about. Okay, so um, if you look here, what, what what's happening here is this is this is my custom theme right here, um, and then within there, the, it, this is kind of odd. And the first time I was doing this, I I didn't really read the instructions quite right, and I missed the fact that I needed to have these template files under this directory structure. So be careful about that when you when you first uh, are doing this. But it has to be under it, it is in the notes. It's under custom modules and views slideshow DD block. And then there's a lot of these templates are the ones that you can download off of their site. Um, and then what I did was I just created a couple of uh, custom templates, including a CSS file. Um, but you'll you'll notice uh, that these mod th these files have variables that you can print out. Um, so inside of these these files, you, you'll you'll be printing these variables that, that get they get used um, to generate these displays. So in my mapping, I, I was mapping the uh, the tab link text to show up over over here, and I could put images in there. Um, you can you can change what fields show up here with with custom templating. You can do whatever you want, really. I haven't done much modification on this one, <coughs> um, but I will show you. It's it's actually really easy to change these things around a bit. So I'll edit this. Close out this one. I don't need. Um, if you want to do things like just flip the uh, positioning of the of the text, for example. Okay, so slide text positions. This is the slide text settings box. Um, you can do top, right, bottom, or left, right? Um, so if I select right, say update, save it. you'll see that this text has now moved over to the right side. So rather than you having to uh, do all of this stuff yourself, a lot of these things are built in with the DD block module, which is, which is a nice head start. Um, <coughs> and then just edit this in the end. Um, oh, another thing I wanted to show you is um, I, I mentioned that I wanted to be able to make it easy for administrators to change the display style of a slideshow. Um, and so what I've, what I've done is I've set it up so you can edit the node. You can see here, this is using a node reference field with multiple values. You can, you can set the slides that you want to show in the slideshow. You can rearrange the order um, and you can also 
select which display style to use. So all I've done to create this display style drop down is it's a text field and the keys map to the um, to the display ID of the view. So um, I can show you in my template how that's done, but basically it, it just tells it, okay, use that display style for, for this node. Um, oops, did I change it? No, I didn't. So let's change it to this one. Save it. And all of a sudden the, the, the slideshow looks totally different. Um, and by providing all these different um, styles, your, your website administrator has lots of options to be able to create different slideshows, quickly change the style of it. Um, and then they can embed those, um, these slideshows anywhere they want. Um, I'll change it back though. Um, so, part of the way I did that, um, is about this file here. So, <coughs> th this is the function that you need to be concerned with as far as um, getting those display styles to switch. And also, when I, when I view the node, You'll, you'll notice I'm not just normally with a, a, a node that you're looking at where you just have a, a, a node reference field on it. All you're going to get is a list of the titles of the nodes that you're pointing to. You won't get, you won't get this slideshow showing up. Um, and the reason that I'm getting the slideshow showing up is that I've, I've omitted the normal node rendering and, and I'm overriding that with an embedded view that passes this node's ID in as an argument. Um, and then I use this, uh, <coughs> this views embed view function to first of all specify which, uh, which view to use. That's the view that I was showing you. Um, so this this view, as you can see up here, is called Promo Slides No Graph. Um, so that's that. This field um, is telling it which display to use. And, and that, uh, well, the, the status bar isn't big enough, but you have to get the ID of each of these. Um, do you know the easiest way to do Oh, I, that's right, you can go to theme information. So if I go to theme information, oh, I see it. It says embed, embed two. Um, it's not embed hyphen two. It's embed underscore two. But anyway, that that is those IDs are what I stuck into that drop down text box. And, and then I'm pulling the value in from the, uh, the drop-down box using this. So I'm just looking at the node, this field, give me the value that has been set on this node. And I'm passing in the node ID as the argument. Um, I think I'm running close to the time when I would like to give you guys some time to ask questions. Um, but let me just cover a couple other modules. Um, Hmm? Yeah. Um, so I'll go back here. Oh. So search config module, I liked using that because I don't want these slides or the slideshows to show up in my search results. I really just want them being able to be placed on pages. And that, that module gives you the ability to pull them out of the search index. Um, File field sources just lets me uh, pull images directly from another site. So if you search through Flickr and find um, images that have a license that's okay to use on your site with attribution, you can easily pull them down without having to download and upload again. Um, external links is nice because you, with with these slideshows, I'm sometimes linking off-site and sometimes in-site. 
and I don't want those off-site links to take the user away from the site, at least not, not in my case. Um, and so that, that module just handles that really easily using some jQuery. And the node blocks module, um, what that does is, you'll remember that I told you not to use a, a, a block display type, but to use the embed display type instead, because I didn't want every single display to, to build a new block. Um, this one allows me, every time I create a new slideshow, I can, it, it automatically creates a block for that specific slideshow, and then I can take that block and embed it anywhere on the site. Um, so anyway, does anyone have any questions about this stuff? No? <laughs> a any, any questions at all? Is this simple or, yeah. Okay, um, the difference between embed and a block is really just, it, it's, it's somewhat semantical, but if I, if I were to create these blocks, or to create these displays as blocks, then they would show up in the blocks administration interface. And because the way that I have this view set up, I'm using arguments and stuff, the block isn't really useful anyway so I, I don't I don't want blocks generated for these I want them generated for the slide the actual slideshows yeah You can have a region up on the top of your front page, and you set the blocks up there, and that would work too. But some people need it for passing their reasons. Do you want to cover the 3.0 stuff? Yeah. Any other questions? Gary. Sorry. I don't know if I heard you correctly. Did you say that these um, template files are coming into the module? Okay, yeah. The, the template files that you see down the side there, um, those all come with it. The ones that say 10 feet, 20 feet, 30 feet. They don't come with the module when you download it, but if you follow the links that the module provides, there's another site where they let you download this, this module's theme pack. Any other questions for Gary? You have two views on the same page, is that what you're asking? Um, yeah. Or like a view within a view? Yeah, I, I had a page with five slideshows all, all together. Yeah. Yeah, two on the same is not so good? Yeah. No, you, it's fine. We have unique IDs for each one of your views. Okay. So that'll work. Um, any other questions? So, and just to really quickly, really quickly, um, and thank you for your patience, to go through. What's new? Going to be new in three. Um, the main thing I wanted to do for three is uh, clean up the administration screen. So this is views three, so it looks a little different if you guys get kind of wonky on here. Um, but the administration screen before had all the big, huge list of options, and so what I did is I combined all the options and created headers for them, separated them into sections. Um, and you're like, well, why can't you do that in the old version? But when you move uh, fields and views, they get new variables sometimes, depending on how you had them. So I said, oh, I'm going to just start new from three. Um, so this is actually another module. You can see before we had single frame and thumbnail hover. Those are now marked as legacy. Um, and cycle is going to be the new module. Now what happened is this one is I combined single frame and thumbnail hover. So I thought, okay, so what is single frame, what is thumbnail hover, and what are the differences? Well, there isn't much difference. The main thing between single frame and thumbnail hover is the pagers. Thumbnail hover lets you choose fields for the pagers. Single frame doesn't. That was the only difference. So I combined them, and now fields is an option as one of your pagers. 
So if you choose your pager, you see I have an option now, fields, numbered, thumbnails. So it's now combined into one module, because that's all really the difference was. So I came into this module uh, like two, version two beta, no, that wasn't beta, it was like alpha three or something like that. And so it had already started, and then I just kind of pushed it out until it got to two and there. So now I have different ideas for, for what can happen. And I guess I'll keep on doing them until Aaron tells me not to. Um, so that's the first thing, is this is going to be cleaned up, organized. A lot of stuff is hided, hide, hid behind advanced options. So you have transition, and then you have advanced options for those transitions. Um, you have actions, and then you have advanced options for those actions. But the main actions are what's going to show up. The main ones that people use as far as transition, now transitions move to the top, because that's really the most important thing people want to see. Um, and yeah, so then we have the Inner Explorer tweaks. So real quick, just an Inner Explorer tweaks. This is on both of them. Um, Inner Explorer has problems with backgrounds um, because with transparent backgrounds during the rotation. So when it goes transparent during the rotation, it like it likes to put a black background behind it. Um, so a combination of these, and some it's kind of random on which ones actually work. But sometimes it's one off, one on, but just try them, one off, one on, and usually it works to fix your Internet Explorer issues. Um, another thing that's going to happen that's not in there yet is these options. So we use jQuery Cycle to handle the rotation. Um, it's a jQuery module a plugin. And right now I have, I have an advanced options box um, where you could type in each one of the plugin's options in there. Uh, it's really a pain in that box um, to try to get everything right. So I'm going to replace that box and I'm going to put every single option in there as a field. So you can add your own stuff in there and you'll have every single option available in there. Anything in there overrides anything up above. Um, and that's just a lot of copying and pasting. Um, and then the last thing I want to do before I release it is a Views Carousel and Views Rotator, they're combining, but uh, they have the option of choosing styles. Um, and I really like that idea, so I think I'm going to implement that idea. Um, I would really like to be able to combine with them. They're combining because they're really similar. We have tons more options people ask for. Um, they have just kind of the jQuery cycle basic options in there. Um, so I'm not quite able to just you know, throw out all those options. Um, but I am going to kind of see if I could take their styles. So where you can choose, I want my thumbs to the left and my image here, and just kind of choose that style. Kind of like what he had in his, in his options. So that's what's up for three. Any questions? Sorry, thanks guys for hanging out. No?